Hey everyone, hope you're having just a lovely day. It's right in the thick of fall, so it's my favorite time of year to go out, take outdoor figure photos. Got this nice weather, got some epic scenery. So I think uh, I'm gonna follow through with my promise from the previous video and give you all some tips on how to get those amazing outdoor shots. So let's get started. Now the first thing I want to talk about as I walk to my destination is um, probably the most important thing you need to do and that's before you ever pick up your camera and it's to do planning. I would say probably a good 75% of the work going into an outdoor shoot is um, in the planning. So I spend a lot of time on Google Maps and Google Earth to do location scouting and then even if I'm just like walking or driving around, I try to take a mental note of like what places might be potentially nice for um, an outdoor shoot. And another thing you want to be checking um, is like the weather. So depending on what kind of mood you're going for in your shots, um, you want to be able to plan for that. So because unlike in a studio, you're not going to have control over a lot of the things that happen, you know, out in the environment. So planning is really, really critical for this. Now, those are two very important things, weather and your location in general. The other thing that you should plan for is timing. So when you are doing that weather report, check your uh, sunrise and sunset hours. Um, personally, I like to go out a few hours before sunset so that um, if you can see behind me, like, the shadows get pretty long, the sun is lower in the sky, so you get some nice directionality to your light, and it's easier to work with. And then about an hour after sunrise to an hour um, before sunset, you get golden hour, which is that really, really nice golden warm light that um, you know portrait photographers are always going after. And then the last part of planning is probably the most fun, but it might also be the most challenging. And that's just choosing a figure to go along with your location. The rule that I typically go with is like, what figure is easiest to unpack and set up while you're outside? So I don't like to bring anything too fragile because I'm a dummy and I break stuff all the time. And I don't want to bring anything that's like, that the assembly process is just like too fiddly. So once you've got your figure picked out, your location scouted out, you got the timing and the weather and everything down, and you actually arrive at where you want to take pictures. The next step is to figure out what, um, what composition you want to use. So this is actually probably the hardest thing to figure out and it takes a lot of experience. But um, I've had a lot of times when I was just starting out that uh, like I would go to a location and see this amazing beautiful scenery or like an epic landscape. But once I actually uh, stopped to like put my figure into the shot and try to take a photo I'd realize that it wouldn't integrate very well into the scene. So my next tip would be to help you to figure that out. You need to be looking at the ground. Now I know it sounds kind of weird but when you're doing these outdoors figure shoots you always want to be kind of studying the ground because that's where your figure is going to be resting most of the time. So you want that to look roughly in scale with the figure, to look like it, uh, it kind of fits, you know, into the ground where you're placing it. So if you don't have a good place to set your figure, then it's not going to result in a very good looking shot, even if you do have an amazing backdrop or something that you want to use. So it's kind of like that micro scale detail that you're looking at. This is actually pretty tough when you're doing nendoroids, so that's why I like to use scale figures because you have a little more leeway in terms of what kind of, um, what kind of terrain you can set it on. When you are studying the ground, you want to be looking at um, the little details, like if there's any plants, you want to be looking at the composition of the ground itself, what it's made of, and then you also want to be studying the light that's falling on the ground because that's what's going to be lighting your figure, so that's what you're going to have to make use of. So I think I'm going to set up my figure around this location somewhere. So what I've done is just set up uh, the figure. This is Gift Saber Lily. 
and I've used a piece of floral wire to prop her up because her regular base is just like a big mirrored disc and it's going to look really out, uh, out of place here. But what I like to do, if you've seen my previous videos, is to put the light source behind the figure to try to get a bit of a rim light. And the reason for that is actually not really to make um, the figure stand out. It's not like really for subject isolation. Your mind kind of needs to see the ambient light playing off the figure a little bit so that uh, subconsciously you kind of integrate it into the environment. Because a lot of times if you just go with like a direct front lighting, it can look a bit out of place. So it's kind of a small thing, but if it's not there, you'll subconsciously, you'll really notice it. All right, I've set up in my second location here. I found this spot of moss. It's good to be on the lookout for moss because it fits really well with scale figures and androids. I found that grass, even like freshly mowed super short grass, tends to be a bit too tall to use for figure photography, but moss always looks good. Now I've set the figure in direct sunlight to show why I'm not really a fan of lighting this way. So even though it's late afternoon and getting into golden hour, um, the light's still not especially soft. So you can see the hard edges on the shadows. And that's the thing with like direct sunlight is it's never going to be especially soft. So if you did want to light from the front, you would have to put some kind of diffuser or shade in front of the figure. So that's why I like to kind of turn everything around and use really the figure itself as its own shade. One more advantage to using backlighting is you don't have to deal with this where your own shadow is getting into the shot. Because with these long late afternoon shadows, that's definitely going to be something that happens a lot. So hopefully with this advice, you're able to get into the right mindset for starting these outdoor figure shoots. And there's a lot that you're going to be able to learn from just experience and doing it. So don't worry if like your shots aren't amazing the first time around. Mine definitely weren't. But before I sign off, I'll give you one more tip, and that is to just kind of explore the area around you. The first location you pick isn't necessarily going to be the best. And a while ago, you know, I was over by Lake Michigan doing a photo shoot with a Misato figure. And I was getting okay results. I wasn't like super happy with them. But on my way back to my car, I just kind of stopped on a beach and decided to take a shot with some uh, like poles that would be used to prop up beach volleyball nets. And that ended up being my favorite shot of that whole set. And actually, that ended up being one of my favorite shots that I've ever taken. So it always pays to move around and you never know like what kind of things you're gonna be able to find. So just explore, enjoy the area you're in. And if you see something cool, take a picture of it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed coming out and chilling with me in one of my favorite spots, in my favorite season, doing one of my favorite things. Uh, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, subscribe, check me out on Instagram. I'll be posting higher res versions of all these photos on my website eventually, so check that out. And if you try out uh, this outdoor stuff for yourself, um, I'd be happy to take a look at it. So feel free to share that in the comments or DM me if you want. Uh, I don't have a lot of sunlight left, so I think I'm going to just keep taking pictures until the sun's down. So I'll leave you guys with some B-roll. Um, so until next time, thanks for watching.